side note, I gotta say, Maya, thank you so much, girl. You calmed me down completely, <laughs> completely. So now I'm in my zen, now I'm in my zen mode, and I am so excited to speak to you all today. So I wanna share a story with you all first. I was about 15 years old when I was first called a bitch. And that word has carried with me into my entire life, pretty much most of my adulthood. It's the reason why I wouldn't share my opinion if it was an unpopular one. It's the reason why I wouldn't speak up in a manager meeting. And I got a shout out to Misha, she's over here in the, in the corner over here. And Misha, it was actually that first manager meeting, I was brand new service manager in the company that I currently work for. The whole three hour meeting, y'all, I did not speak a single word. And Misha called me out on it too. She's like, Candace, you have a voice. Why aren't you sharing what you have? Like you're there for a reason. You see that word bitch, it carried so much value, so much weight to me because I let it, because I believed it. I believed what someone else said about me for so long until one moment I did it. One moment I looked myself in the mirror and I thought to myself, you are so much more than that. You are so much more than what it appears on surface level. So I am so excited to speak to you all today on personal storytelling. You know, I was introduced to this concept of personal storytelling about 18 months ago. And it was, I was actually working with a friend on a storytelling photo shoot. It was really cool. So she was trying to capture the essence of me. During this shoot, I was asked one question that sent me deep into my journey of storytelling. Do you want, want to know what the question is? The question was, how was your relationship with your parents? You see, up until that point, she was you know, snapping away, I'm all posing. She's trying to like, get the essence of me, of who I am. Again, it's a photo shoot, storytelling photo shoot, right? And it wasn't until she hit on that question about my parents, my relationship, or lack of, that I broke down. Tears are streaming down my face. I got mascara running, right? It's, it's ugly, it was an ugly cry, right? But of course, this is what she wanted, right? She's snapping, I've got mascara streaming down my face, and she's capturing the essence of me, but I was triggered. And on my drive home, I started to think to myself, Candace, why were you so triggered by that? Why was that one question about your family something that made you break down? So that was the very beginning of my storytelling journey, everyone. My name is Candace Stinger, and I am a podcaster, I am a writer, a blogger, and the host of Amusing Mama, which is an online community dedicated to helping women worldwide connect through this concept that I'll be speaking to you on around storytelling. So what's probably on your minds right now is, okay, so Candace, clearly she's going to talk about storytelling, but what is storytelling? Again, it's been 18 months that I have dived in head first, feet first into all things storytelling. And I've been able to come up with a description that I'd like to share with you all. But before we get started with that, consider this. It's a quote from Deborah Parker. She says, sometimes we have to inspire and encourage ourselves through the personal narrative, and we start with what we know. That's what I started with what I knew, which was that I was triggered in this photo shoot, the storytelling photo shoot, by a question about my parents. I was triggered by that, and I started with what I knew. So let's get back to what the definition of storytelling is, because in this last 18 months, I feel like I've been screaming from the rooftops about the power of your personal story. Everyone needs to get in touch with your personal story. Maya queued it up for us perfectly, by the way, when she had us meditate and open up that book, literally, right? So let's talk about it. What is storytelling? So again, over the course of 18 months, I've put together a description that I believe best describes what it is we're talking about here. So storytelling is the act of telling one's personal accounts of life experiences to the lens of the person who's sharing that experience. Your story 
is powerful. Another question that might be on your mind right now is, okay, I get that definition, Candace, but why does that matter? Why is that important? Well, it matters because we all want connection, all of us. Stories are our bridge to that connection. So if we're able to dive into what our personal stories are, we're able to understand our experiences, right? So what we've lived through, where we are currently, and where we wanna go in the future. These stories can also help create the space of personal healing. Because I'll talk about it in a moment, knowing your personal story can help you heal any old wounds, any resentment or anger, anything negative that you're still holding on to from the past. Understanding your story can help you step into your greatness and, re and release all of that. And then finally, like I mentioned, the probably most powerful part of it all is that storytelling can connect us all, right? So when you hear a piece of someone's story today and you connect with it because you resonate with it, that is the whole point of storytelling. So in the spirit of authenticity, allow me to share a little bit of what I've uncovered in my story over these last 18 months. So my story starts actually before I was born, y'all. Um, when my parents became pregnant with me, they weren't married, which is fine. Um, but at the time, my mom had it in her mind that she was gonna raise me as a single mom. My dad, he had a difficult time trying, accepting the fact that he was about to be a dad, call it what it is, right? And again, my mom, in her mind, she believed it, that she was gonna, and she stepped up to the plate. My mom's a warrior, she stepped up to the plate and was ready to raise me as a single mom. And as the story goes, it wasn't until I was born, I was in the hospital, probably shortly after that picture was taken, my dad's holding me in his arms for the first time, he's looking down at me, and his whole world changes, as most parents' worlds change when they first become a parent, right? Um, and since then, my parents have been happily married. But the reason, the reason why I start my story specifically there is because that explains all of the deep-rooted beliefs that I have carried with me for my entire life around not being loved, not feeling wanted, literally and figuratively, and not being good enough. So it's the reason why that word bitch carried such huge weight for me for so long. And it affected who I was. Honestly, I can honestly tell you about two years ago, it was impacting the person I showed up to be. The wife that I was. It impacted the mom, the friend that I was, the coworker even, right? I realized that there were some parts of my past that I was still holding on to, it was that. Now another piece of my story is that I am the oldest of four, and as the oldest of four, it has been embedded in me that I am going to be a leader. Right? So I've gravitated towards leadership positions my entire life. I even pursued my master's degree a couple of years ago from Grand Canyon University, shout outs to them. And it, again, just gravitated towards these leadership positions my entire life. And so I worked long hours. Again, I was in those leadership positions, manager positions, in the corporate job that I currently work at. I was working hard. I was hustling, stressing, paying my dues because I thought I knew exactly where I wanted to go in the corporate, my corporate career. And I want to pause for a second, by the way, and talk about the corporate ladder. Because another piece of my story, another layer that I was able to uncover is that for so long, I thought success equated to where I stood or where I was on that corporate ladder. I literally thought that was the only path to success. Until I became a mom. So March 4th, 2014, my daughter Elin was born, and that was the day that my entire life and career took a drastic change. I speak about this often, but I consider the moment I became a mom my awakening. I was waking up to the fact that I wanted more in life. Maybe I didn't want to climb that corporate ladder, and maybe, just maybe I wanted to let go of anything that I was holding on to from my past any of that anger, any of that resentment from my family. So over the course of 18 months, as I have been studying storytelling, 
I have come to learn three important lessons that I'd like to impart on all of you this morning. Lesson number one is that we all have a story to tell, all of us. You know, part of my hang-ups on storytelling was that I thought, who in the hell is going to want to hear my story? Why does my story even matter? I haven't been through anything traumatic. I haven't, you know, anything, right? And so it's important to understand that you all have a story to tell. That's where you're going to connect with other people. Lesson number two is that your story, it might be dark, it might be ugly, but on the flip side of things, it also might be healing and empowering. So I have some dark moments that I haven't even shared about in my past that I used to be ashamed of. And you too might have some dark moments or some ugly truths that you don't even want to face, you don't even want to realize. But you've got to be able to stand in your own truth to be able to own it. And then finally, lesson number three, and this is probably the most important one of them all, is that we can write and rewrite our stories. Your story is ever evolving, and you are the storyteller. So again, you may have some dark moments in your past where maybe you've pushed down deep inside, where even you've forgotten. But you've got to be able to be courageous enough and heal from those stories that you might be holding on to, any of the negative um, emotions that you might be holding on to as well. So now that we've talked about storytelling, there is some paper in front of all of you guys. Consider this question right now. We're all here to learn about love and how it manifests in our lives, right? And I truly believe that understanding where you come from, your personal story, is the start to how you can really understand and embrace love in all aspects of your life. So consider this question. What would it look like if you loved and honored the story that you've lived through? Stop for a second to let it marinate, write it down, and whatever first comes up in your mind. Again, what would it look like if you loved and honored the story that you've lived through? Write down what it would feel like. Who would be around you? What hurt would you forgive? What pride would you have when you've empowered, you're empowered by your story? So my challenge for you today is to start getting curious around what your story is. I've got four steps to help you get started today. Step number one, get a journal. If you don't have a journal, it is probably the cheapest and best investment you can make in your personal growth. So get a journal. Step number two is to commit to writing 10 minutes on a daily basis. Give yourself that time, respect yourself with that time, and dive into what your personal story is. And here's the thing, there's no rules with it. Just be curious and see what comes up. Step number three goes along with what I just said. So be curious about your story as you're writing, which leads to step number four, practice withholding any judgment to get to the core of what really matters most to you. Experiences you've lived through, don't judge it. Just write it down. So remember, everyone has a story to tell. It is powerful. It can connect us all. I highly encourage you all to get curious about that story today. Thank you so much.